Welcome to this worship from Trinity Lutheran Church in Marshalltown, Iowa. Trinity is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America with the motto, God's work, our hands. We begin with the words that were spoken when we were washed with the waters of God's love in our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pause and call to mind the need we all have for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise to be with us, especially when life is hard and confusing. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to calm our fears and give us courage. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, even when we doubt and lack faith, you never turn from us. Lord, have mercy. This is the good news. God is mercy, and in the name of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Jesus. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your love above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our responsorial psalm is from Psalm 111. Our response is, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who honor you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the land of the nations. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart.
Alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know the hope to which God has called us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And he entered, as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith is has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My mom once sent me a cartoon in the mail. This cartoon showed a gentleman lying in a hospital bed, hooked up to an IV and other tubes. And there was another man standing next to his bed. And this man said to the one who was sick in bed, Pastor, I have good news for you. Last night at our parish council meeting, we voted 11 to 3 in favor of your recovery. Well, perhaps the moral is, is that you rarely get 100% in this life. And in our gospel for today, Jesus didn't even come close to 100%. He got a 10% return of thanks from those whom he had healed. It is easy to be hard on the nine who did not come back to give thanks. And I would guess that all of us, if we had been snatched from the jaws of something like leprosy, we would have sprinted to the closest church and prostrated ourselves before the altar. You see, I don't think it is the really big things in life that are the test of our thanksgiving. I think we do a pretty good job at that. I think we do express a lot of thanks when momentous and miraculous and amazing things happen to us. I think what tests our thanksgiving is the simple day in and day out graces that are constantly flowing into our lives and therefore so often go unnoticed by us. I was presiding at a Thanksgiving service in a chapel at a care center. And I began my homily by saying to the people, what are you thankful for today? Well, I intended it to be a rhetorical question. I wasn't expecting them to answer. 
I was just kind of putting them in a frame of mind, and then I was going to continue on with the homily, but that's not how it worked that day. They said, what are you thankful for today? And all of a sudden, all these hands started popping up throughout the chapel. And I said very little from there on. For about 20 minutes, I just listened to people express their thanksgivings. And there are some of them that I still remember. One person said, I am thankful that I can now go to the dining room just using my walker. I don't need my wheelchair anymore. Another person said, I am thankful that they got my leaky bladder taken care of. And another said, I am thankful that some of my buddies from church came by to visit and to play cards. Those are things in my life that too easily go unnoticed. Being able to move freely, having control of my bodily functions, having friends that I can play games with. I think it is not the really big, momentous, miraculous things in life that are the test of our thanksgiving. I think we do a good job of gratefulness for them. But I think it is the daily, simple gifts and graces that are constantly flowing into our lives and therefore easily go unnoticed. In our church, we frequently call communion the Eucharist. The Greek word Eucharist is thanks or thanksgiving. It's what Jesus said as he blessed the bread and the wine. And when we are attentive and discerning of the gifts and graces that are just constantly flowing in the dailiness of our lives, our whole of life can be a Eucharist, a time of thanksgiving. Our kids get on the school bus or we take them to school. It becomes a time to be attentive to the grace of gift of teachers and of education. We go to the doctor to get our flu shot and it becomes a time to be attentive to the gift and grace of having health care. We take a hot shower and it becomes a time to be attentive to the gift and grace of having clean running water. We take a drive through the countryside, especially during this time of year. It becomes a time to be attentive to the gift and grace of farmers doing their work, of harvesting the crop that feeds the world. I don't think it's the big things that are really the test of our thanksgiving, but it is the daily gift and graces that are constantly flowing into our lives that too easily are unnoticed. I want to be the Samaritan leper returning to give thanks to Jesus. I want to be habitual with my gratitude. Gratitude is the soil in which generosity grows. The more we practice gratitude, the more God reveals to us opportunities to use our lives, to use our love, to use our prayers, to use our time, to use our resources and our gifts, the more we practice gratitude, the more God reveals to us the opportunities to use ourselves for the sake of our neighbor, whom God desires to bless and to provide for through us. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of grace and mercy, your faithfulness endures for all ages. Trusting in you, we offer our prayers. For government leaders to work together for the common good, Lord, in your mercy. That we will be faithful stewards of the soil, air, and water, Lord, in your mercy. For expectant parents, that the little ones who are growing will be kept healthy, Lord, in your mercy. For all of us to do what we can to protect and provide for our young people, Lord, in your mercy. For the sick and those who care for them, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for the bereaved and those who provide comfort, for all in need, especially those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, God, that you call forth good and faithful leaders for your church. Pour out your blessing upon our bishops, Elizabeth and Michael and Bishop-elect Amy. May they be filled with the wisdom that comes from you. And may they be kept in good health. Lord, in your mercy. May the God of lavish love bless us with grateful hearts and joyful spirits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God of life, from the earth you provide us with wheat and grapes that become bread and wine. And now by your blessing they become for us the body and blood of Jesus who forgives all our sins and promises us eternal life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty Father, who created the world and called us to care for it with a spirit of wonder and faithfulness. You sent Jesus to give us a heart of mercy and to fill us with love for all that you have made. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When the supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, Father, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, and as we await his coming in glory, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We remember those of our parish whose anniversary of death we commemorate this week. Barbara, Donna, Christy, Terry, Barry, Earl, and Pam. We give thanks for their lives and rejoice in the new life they now share with you and all the saints. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, great physician, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. The body of Christ, amen. The blood of Christ, amen. Loving God, once again you have welcomed us to receive you in these gifts of bread and wine. Thank you for your grace and mercy. May we go out this week to let our light shine and so give glory and honor to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At the close of every worship, we pray for three of our parish families. Loving God, bless our families and fill our homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Especially send your blessing upon Jim and Martha and their family, Kent and Carol and their family, Connie and her family. Protect them, guide them, and deepen their love for you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O saving Lord Jesus, hear our pleas as we come before you to pray for deliverance and protection from the coronavirus. We pray for all who are sick and suffering and for families who are grieving. Give us each the determination to do all we can to stop the spread. Especially put a shield of protection around all our precious children. Give insight and skill to those working to develop medicines and the vaccine we need. We commend ourselves, our community, our country, and our world into your hands. Lord, we love you and adore you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless us. May God fill our minds with wisdom. May God fill our hearts with peace. And may God fill our actions with love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.